How y'all be today? Everybody doing all right? It's time for Fancy Nancy. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Let me shoot out to good old Twitter hair. And uh, we're going to get started here. Good morning. My name is Rashida Monique. And I'm here Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday between the 7 a.m. and 7.30 hour Eastern Standard Time with the Daily Shift broadcast to delve into the Word of God and principles of the Word to um, bring about um, correct trajectory to the goals that we have set in our lives, the goals uh, that the Lord has placed inside of us, those dreams and things that we really um, have been called to do. So today is Thursday. Um, but before, I want to thank you for joining. And if you're watching on the replay, I appreciate you for watching. Hopefully, you stay till the end so you can see what's really going on in the broadcast. And hopefully, you can go ahead and follow and like here on Periscope, Facebook, Instagram, and on the YouTube, all under Rashida Monique. All right. So, let's go ahead and go forth. The shift protocol calls for us to talk about focus on today. Today is Thursday. It is October the 22nd. This is the day that the Lord has made uh, in his year of 2020, right? We are, um, we will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm, I command my day, right? I'm committed to rejoicing. I am determined to rejoice. I will not let anything separate me from the love of God, neither life nor death or principalities or things present or things in the past to separate me from his love so I can rejoice in this day. So, um, so let's just go. Let's just go. Today is Thursday. We're talking about focus and what's really been on my mind. And I wanted to name it one thing, but I wasn't quite sure. So I just didn't name it at all. But it is our focus day. And our focus is always on the Lord. Our focus is always on the Lord. But let's not be um, non-receptive to the things that God may do because they don't look like what we normally, what we think they would look like. Hey, Shelly, good morning. That what they would look like. And so sometimes the Lord sends us help or a word of instruction or an answer. And it doesn't come in the form that we think it should. Um, I There were some things that I was question, sort of lightweight questioning in my mind, but I really hadn't put a lot of research to it. So I joined... Um, this challenge to pray for your future spouse. And so in that challenge, I was thoroughly surprised and pleasantly surprised when most of the challenge was you praying for yourself, then praying for your spouse. Why? Because you attract with what you are. And right, and if you want to pray a person, you want to attract a praying person. If you love God, you want to attract a person that loves God. And there may be some areas that you may not know what to pray for, right? And so I love the, the structure of that program. Therefore, I signed up for the One University. And this structure, the first, what, three months, we are delving into personal relationship with the Lord. And it's like, okay, well, Rashida, you already have a personal relationship with the Lord. Yeah. I do. And when I looked at the first few lessons, I was like, oh, this would be a breeze. And then I had to tell myself, hey, the diary, I had to tell myself, don't get full of yourself. Take this and do the work like you like you didn't know how to do the work, do most of this stuff. And I tell you what I learned, there was some gaps. Let's put it that way. There were some gaps in my execution, whether it was my prayer life and fasting or some different concepts or different things that I had not. Um, thought of or hadn't studied out or hadn't heard of that really blessed me in this study. I never thought to find that in something when preparing for marriage, in a, in a course talking about being prepared for marriage. Never thought I would find that there. Um, so let's go forward. That that course had a live masterclass on Monday. Um, one of the ladies that um, our intercessor for our yeah, our intercessor for the uh, Jurisdictional Missionaries Training Institute um, was facilitating a class on prayer watches on that same Monday. And so I was like, I'm not going to sign up for two classes because, you know, Rashida's team too much. I sign up for stuff, forget I signed up for it, and then I have 12 billion classes I'm taking. I love the internet. So um, I get a call. <laughs> Mama Ransom said she wants you to sign up for this course because you were on her heart. And I said, okay, 
So I got off the phone and I signed up for the course. Why? Because when the Lord puts you on somebody's heart, that means for you to move. He's putting you in places. And when you don't be in the place, he's going to make sure that you find yourself in the place. And so here I am in this course. And I was like, okay, well, I don't know anything about prayer watches. So let me read up on it. I've heard about it. I, people preached on certain things about this happening. You know, this is this watch of the day, but I've never really studied the prayer watches out. So as she was talking on uh, Monday night, because this one didn't have the replay and the other one did. Okay. So, um, as I was listening to her doing the introduction, it was just some key things that filled in more gaps. And I was so amazed and I could just show you my notes and you'll be like, ain't nothing special about them notes. Listen, I don't know about you, but when God takes and strategically moves things around so you can be in a place to receive what you need. That just shows me that God is absolutely and positively concerned about me. But if I hadn't been so focused and it's like, well, the Lord didn't give me that in my prayer time, so I don't need that. Well, the Lord didn't show me that, so I don't need this. We get stuck because it didn't come from my pastor. We don't want to hear it because it didn't come from my bishop. We don't want to hear it. It didn't come from my spouse. We don't want to hear it. Hey, Prophet Jones, because it didn't come from some certain person. We don't want to hear it. We don't want to take heed from it. I remember there was a sermon preached at a conference from a preacher that, um, y'all know there's some people that you just don't deal with you know this the not just their delivery but it's like the questionable lifestyles or where they found and all this stuff is usually just what you feel like when you see them it's not necessarily fact um and it's like okay but when the word came forth and he was in the word i can't i'm not gonna dispute what the word of god says so then I had to learn, the Lord told me that you are responsible for the words we hear no matter where it comes from. We assume or we we uh, equate receiving the word with receiving the person. But as I told y'all before, if God can speak through a donkey, Surely he can use somebody that you don't like. Surely he can use somebody that you don't agree with. Surely. Right? So let's not be like the man that was drowning in the sea and the rowboat came and the yacht came and the cruise liner came and we just let, let somebody come in to save us, pass us by. Because we, we're looking at God, but we think God only looks one certain way. I'm pretty sure when Israel was praying for deliverance out of the land of Egypt, they never thought that God would send Moses back. Right? Shelly said, boom, receive his word regardless of who the messenger is. Yeah, nobody thought he would send Moses back. Even when Jesus came to earth they were like ain't this joseph's son he a comforter how can he know these things they weren't even considering the fact that he knew these things not even excited about the fact that he had the word of god on the inside their thing was oh he's just a carpenter's son how can he know these things what makes him think he has a right to heal people on the sabbath what make him think he has the right to come here and tell us this that and the other and some of us because we are mature in uh, the Lord or we've been saved for a while and the Lord has showed us and revealed things to us that when he sends somebody else, a new saint, a child, somebody that you think drink too much, somebody you think cuss too much, somebody that you think be in the club too much and God puts a word in their mouth for you. And you reject it. And then you be like, Lord, I just want to know what I need to do. I just want to know what I need to do. He was like, well, you wouldn't listen because I sent it your way. And you turn it away. And you be like, well, Rashida, that's just really something. Well, let me tell you about, let me tell you something about 18, 19 year old Rashida. I, um, I was in high school and I was a friend with a lot of boys. And quite a few of the boys I had crushes on. 
<laughs> but they would have never, I would never tell them, right? And so, um, some of them was older. And so, when they graduated, it's like, okay, give me your number, give me your number, blah, blah, blah. We, you know, exchange information. So, one of the guys came back from, I don't even know what it's called. Let me just gonna call it basic training, but he wasn't in the army. Um, and we, he called once time when he came home. And then, um, we were supposed to get together and go somewhere or whatever. And he never called me back. Never called me back. And I was sitting there in my feelings, but I refused to call him again. So, I was talking to another friend that was the same age as me. Uh, and they played the sports together. They played sports together. I ain't gonna get too much information because I think I'm friends on social media with both of them. But anyway. <laughs> so, he, um, he was like, Rashida. My friend was like, why are you even worried about that? You know the only reason he called you was for a booty call. He ain't even interested in you. You a church girl. You don't need to be fooling with him. Blah, 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 blah. Now, mind you, this boy was not saying. They was in the same crowd and probably doing the same thing. Just the fact that I was his friend and he wasn't coming after me that he just so told me that. And so now when I see him, I be like, you know I love you, right? He was like... He always say, what? I said, just know that the Lord was using you when you didn't even know you was being used. Why? Because the Lord knows I didn't need to be yoked up with him. 18-year-old, 19-year-old, she would not would have been running around in circles trying to keep a man and didn't want to be kept. Come on. I'd have been in all kind of crazy, dangerous things trying to please somebody that wasn't trying to be pleased. Come on. I want y'all to understand. But if I had rejected that word, then I didn't see it as a word. Then I was mad. <laughs> then I was mad. But now I can look at that and I say, you know, God was using him because he didn't have that path for me to take. And so when we focus on God, we need to know that he's going to use people, places, and things around us to keep us on the course that he would have us to be. I already told y'all, sometimes I could be watching a movie and the Lord would take an example out the movie and be like, okay, see this, this, and this. And, it's, and it will bring an example of what I had either read in the Word or heard from the Word. And so um, find, try to take some of the blinders off that we have right so you might be ame and so you feel like you can only you can only listen to ame preachers and i know this is going totally against what some of us been taught in church you don't eat from everybody's table you don't eat from everybody's table let me tell you something if you teach your the congregation because they're not your people if you're a pastor let me let me help you the people that you lead they are god's people they're not your people. Your job is to shepherd them and lead them to Jesus. They're supposed to follow you as you follow Christ. It's not about them following with you, stay with you, worship you, and all that. Okay, so now we got that clear. You tell them not to eat from other people's table. Your job is to help them develop a life, a prayer life, a word life and a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what your job is. Your job is to teach them, encourage them, help mature them, help them walk into deliverance, help them walk into a closer relationship with the Lord. So when they hear a word from a different table, they know how to, I wish I had a piece of chicken. They know how to eat the meat and throw out the bones. They know how to take the meat and pick off the fat, right? They know how to take the meat and take the skin off. They know how to take what they need out of that thing and then take off the other. So, I'm going where I can eat. My table may not have meat, right? There you go. So, we need to learn how not to just feel like we have to bind these people up and get them to totally dependent on us that they can't even think for themselves. They can't pray for themselves. They can't study for themselves. They can't fast for themselves. Come on, because I am sick and tired. And I just believe this is why God is taking me. I'm sick and tired of watching people serve in a church for 40 years, for 30 and 40 years, and the pastor die and the people just leave God altogether. So my question is then, who was you serving? Was you serving God 
Or was you serving the pastor? I'm not saying you're not going to be heartbroken. I'm not saying you're not going to feel lost. I'm not saying none of that. But what I'm saying is, why do we leave God altogether? Who were we serving? I would love to believe that if I died today, that anybody listening to anything I ever said would not fall out with God because I passed away. Because anybody should know that to live is Christ, but to die is gain. When I leave this earth, I live with Jesus. And there is no reason it's in a day of technology and education and intelligence for us to have these mega churches and these uh, prominent smaller churches and we preach the word and on the radio and on social media and then when you die people act like they can't live for the Lord it's because we haven't taught them the right thing we taught them to give tithes and offer we taught them to show up on Sunday service we've taught them to follow leadership but you didn't teach them that if they heard a word from somewhere else how to compare it to the word of God and be able to discern the difference between what somebody else has said what somebody's preference is and what the word of god says or what the culture says and what the word of god says this is the culture but this is the word of god and a lot of times we allow the culture to dissuade us from what the word of god has said or we take the the, the word of god and say it's not right because it don't fit the culture the word of god cannot be based on culture because the culture always same can't always changes that's why when jesus come he said i didn't come to uh to uproot and turn over the roman government i didn't come here for war why because that wasn't going to change the hearts and minds of people it was just going to change the circumstances but he came that we may have life and more life more abundantly and the best way you can have a good life the only way you can strive in the midst of turmoil the only way you can have success and when everybody else is failing is to have Jesus on the inside and be changed from the inward part right that's how that's why sometimes during slavery people still could find joy in their families because they had they had joy on the inward part it wasn't in the cotton field it wasn't in the clothes that they wear it wasn't in the styles of the hair but the joy was they found joy in family they found joy in in creating they found they found a way to find joy and just like the egyptians you know it made the oppressor mad because now I can oppress your spirit. My pastor always, hey, he would tell a story um, uh, about a young man that, um, I haven't heard that in a long time. He would tell a story about a young man and he would do something and his mom's like, sit down. And he would stand back up. His mom said, sit down. And he would stand back up. And then he got a whooping and, my, and the mom would say, sit down. And he's sitting there and I'm standing up in my heart. <laughs> I'm standing up on, in my heart, right? We have to be focused on the Lord to have him on the inside. And then also know that because we're focused on him, he's going to send people across our way. He's going to send words across the way. He's going to send examples across our way. But we have to be, you know, we think about discernment. A lot of times when we see discernment, we just feel like, oh, I can see they ain't right. They ain't this, they ain't that. You know, I ain't, we got to be soothsayers or diviners. But discernment will tell you, oh, okay, I need to take this part from this, right? And I'm going to tell you where I got this lesson from in a minute. This part from this. Oh, I got this book. Uh, yeah, I know about um um praying on a regular. I know about Thanksgiving, but let me really talk about this uh uh praying the scriptures and let me really get into this praying in the script praying the scriptures. Um and so let me find out another way to get more scripture in me, you know, in my memory so that the Holy Ghost can bring it back up. These things that we learn to pick out. I may not, I may be church of God in Christ, but if you A and me and you in the word of God or you have a process that may help me, ain't only for me to throw it away because you A and me. That's something we made. Jesus didn't make that because see, Jesus was, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus didn't have a denomination. Just let y'all know. Um, so how I got this lesson, I was listening to Talent and Ty, his and her money, money couple, right? His and her money couple. And they were interviewing a man that has a business, um, teaching people about budgeting. And he was saying that, uh, well, he was saying that, you know, he don't teach certain things and he don't teach this and he don't teach that. He was like, but you know, a lot of times people are turn things away and won't take what serves them. And then I began to think about Dave Ramsey because I've taught Dave Ramsey's financial peace for some years before. And people are, a thousand dollars ain't enough. That don't make sense. And it's like, did you read the book? It's a starter saving. 
And if you don't have nothing saved, $1,000 is a lot of money, right? It's better than what you started. And so I'm like, that's a starter. You're not supposed to say it $1,000, you know? And so, and then you, then here I go. If $1,000 ain't enough, just save $2,000 or $10,000 and pay off your debt. You know, why is it that you throw the whole plan away because you disagree with one point? And a lot of us have found ourselves in trouble because we disagree with one point and we throw away everything else. We throw away everything else because of the one thing we disagree with. And that's the problem we have in, in politics today. That Nobody cares about serving the people. They don't care about the serving the people. Either side, they just want to be the one right. And they just want to be the one in charge. They don't want to work together. They don't want to do what's best for everybody. They was like, well, we got this differences of, of, of opinion, so we just going to run rough shot, and it's all us or nothing. No longer is it about the constituents. No longer is it about the people at all. They just play on people's emotions to get in office and then they do what they want to do anyway. And it's not just on the national level. It's in the local level and on the state level. So now, I don't know about how y'all praying. I'm praying for God to expose everything that ain't like him, right? Everything that's not right. And I'm asking him to raise up godly leaders. You know, those of us that are really good, we you know have a heart for people and we can do politics. I'm asking him to raise them up. Right? In and out the church. Right, Shelly. Right. Because we have... <laughs> I ain't even about to go there with y'all because that'd be a whole nother half hour. So we have to really, really stay focused on Jesus. But take the blinders off. Realize God can use anybody. Right? He can use anybody. To come and minister to you, to help you, to, to teach you, to educate you, to push you along. And don't turn them away. Your discernment is not just when people, you think people are going to do you wrong. Mm -hmm, I knew someone right about them. And you know, sometimes familiar spirit because you like that. But anyway. Lord, we pray so we thank you for this day. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for your loving kindness, your tender mercy. God, we thank you for your grace, your peace, and for your joy. God, we thank you for your long suffering. God, that you're ever patient with us. And for that, God, we thank you on this Thursday morning. Lord, as we keep our eyes turned towards you, you said that if we keep you and our focus that you would keep our mind stayed on you, that you would give us perfect peace if we keep our mind stayed on you. So God, help us keep our mind on you. But help us to know how to see you when you're moving, oh God. And whether it's in a place where we normally don't go or um, in people that we normally don't deal with, God, help us to see you in the midst. Help us to see your handiwork in the earth. Help us to hear your voice. God, help us to hear your voice even when it's from a person's mouth that we do not uh, agree with or somebody that we don't know, God, but help us to see you in the name of Jesus. God, give us wisdom and understanding. Help us to be like Solomon, that when we don't have that somebody else gives to us, that we won't turn it away, but help us to receive help from where you told us to get help. You told Solomon to go to different nations and different places to get labor and to get supplies to build your temple. God, we thank you that Solomon did not have a mind of pride. So God, help us not to be prideful. Help us to be humble before you and be able to seek help and receive help where you send it. And God, we praise and we thank you for this word on today. We glorify you on today. We magnify you and we give you praise because you are worthy. And we give you glory, God. Hallelujah. We give you honor and we give you praise. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 Thank you all for joining. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate you for all for being here on this Thursday morning. It's raining here, y'all, and I want to go back to bed. But I appreciate you all for being here. Uh, if you're watching the replay, go ahead and follow, subscribe, like, turn on your notifications, and all those things on whatever platform you see this video. I do want you to know that you are blessed. 
You are highly favored. You are the apple of your father's eye. He is absolutely and positively concerned about you. He thinks that you are the best thing since sliced bread. You can cast your cares on him and know that God cares for you and that God loves you with an everlasting love. And there's nothing and there's no thing you could do about it. You all have a wonderful and a blessed day. And I, Lord willing, creep don't rise. I'll see y'all here tomorrow morning for our triumph. Friday, our celebration Friday, our free praise Friday, where we're going to give God some glory on tomorrow. You all have a great day.